In this video, we're going to create a behavior called seeking. The idea is that we'll be able to have any specific object seek another object. So at the end of this video, we'll have a scenario where we have multiple actors, and some of those actors will be called drones, and they will be told to follow the leader actor. Now the seeking behavior itself is actually going to be relatively simple. Since we can find a vector pointing between two positions using simple subtraction. So the idea is that the behavior itself is very simple but very generally applicable. So once we create the behavior itself, we'll enhance our scene somewhat to add additional actors. But all of this is going to begin inside of the behavior file. We'll jump in here right after the behavior wonder class and we will put together the behavior seek class. So our class definition is going to be class behavior seek that will extend behavior. Now inside of our seek class, there is one piece of state information we're going to need to store, and that is the target actor that we're trying to seek towards, basically the actor that we're following. So what we'll do is we'll make a field, a private field, of type actor called target. Now, since we have this field, we need to make sure that the field gets set up as soon as we make a new seeking behavior instance. So we'll create a constructor that allows us to take in a target actor. So we will assemble a public constructor as public behavior seek. Behavior seek will take in the standard float for our weight value. It will also take in an actor parameter for our target. Then as we've done before, we'll make our call to the base constructor, passing in the weight parameter. So we'll drop in the braces for our constructor's body so that we can set up the target field. So this dot target will be equal to the parameter target. All right, now for the update method we will override behaviors update method. We will remove the call to base.update and we need to put in a simple calculation that will result in a vector two pointing at the target actor. Now we can do that by simply taking the target's position and subtracting this actor's position that will result in a value pointing at the target. So what we'll do is we'll make a local vector2 variable here inside of the update method called target direction. And this value will be set to target dot direction minus actor dot direction. And looking at our assignment, ah, I see. We want to, rather than separating the directions, because of course the directions, we'd have to calculate those if, as though they were rotation. We actually want the points between the two. So instead of using direction, let's actually stick back a bit. What was intended was position, target.position minus actor.position. So again, slightly getting just a little bit too friendly with IntelliSense. So that is one thing you do have to watch out for, of course, with the Direction also being a vector too is the fact that even though they're, they're the same data type, they store very different data. But again, we have a position. If we take the actor's position, subtract that from the target's position, that will result in a directional vector. So that's where things get just a little bit confusing. So we have this new directional vector that will point from the actor to the target. Now the other thing, in, in addition to pointing at the target, it will also contain the distance between the target. So we need to normalize this vector before we use it in the final calculation. So we need to make sure that we take our target direction and normalize it. So now that we have a unit vector to work with, we can apply that to the actor's direction. So we can take actor.direction and we can increase this by the target direction times this behavior's weight. So looking at that, let me clean up the space here at the very bottom of our method. Pull this back just a little bit. And that's all we need to do inside of behavior seek. Again, very simple since 
all of the seeking behavior really comes down to this one calculation. We're just looking at moving from wherever we are to wherever we're looking at based on the position of a target actor. All right, now that we have this behavior put together, let's see what we can do with it. So back here in the game class, let's create a new actor. Let's make an actor variable. So actor, let's call this actor drone. And we will instantiate a new actor feeding in the same standard texture, which is our arrow texture. Now for a color, I'm simply going to specify the color of white. So we'll have a white color for all of our drone actors. Now with this new drone, there are some additional properties that we want to record for the drone itself. So we'll do that by setting some of its various fields, beginning with speed. So we'll say we'll take our new drone actor, we will set its speed to a value of 3, so that it's slightly slower than the leader actor. We'll set its direction to be pointing in a new random direction. So drone.direction will be equal to actor.getRandomDirection. And just like we did with the leader, we want to position the drone randomly on screen. So drone.position will be equal to actor.getRandomPosition and we will feed in the screen width and the screen height for our range X and range Y. So screen width, screen height, that will take care of get random position. Now we need to add some behavior to our new drone. So we'll take our drone, look at his behavior list, we'll add a new behavior to it. In this case we're going to be adding a behavior seek. Now behavior seek is going to need to take in a weight, so we'll specify a weight of 0 0.05 and a target actor of the leader. So we'll have this drone seek or follow the leader. We can finish off the closing parenthesis for our list.add call, terminate that statement, and we should be ready to test. If we build and run the game now, we see we have two actors on screen and we see that the uh, grayish colored actor is following the green leader actor. As a matter of fact, I could take control of the leader and begin moving him around and see that the drone actor now follows wherever the leader actor goes. But of course, since their speeds are slightly different, I can easily run away from the following or the seeking drone. So all that seems to be working very nicely. Now let's see what we need to do if we wanted more drones, because so far we've only created actors one at a time. Let's adjust the code that's creating drones so that we can create any number of drones. So what I want to do is let's begin, because I'm going to show another concept as well. In addition to showing multiple actors, we'll also show one of the interesting things that can be done with behaviors. We're actually going to share a single behavior instance between multiple actors. So let's get this set up first. I'm going to take the instantiation of behavior seek and cut it from the behavior list.add line, and I'm going to move its definition up above the drone itself. So I'm actually going to make a behavior variable that I'm going to call seek, and that behavior will be set to the behavior for the seek. So here I will paste in the statement giving us a new behavior seek with the current parameters. All right, now let's change the actor creation, or excuse me, the drone creation code to work inside of a loop. So I'm going to define a for loop. I'll bring up the template for the for loop to speed things up. We'll use the index variable i, and we will create 10 actors. Now I'm going to take all of the actor creation code, move that up into the for loop, and here everything can stay the same except we do need something to feed into the behavior list. So each time we go through the new drone instance, we'll add the same behavior currently stored in the seek variable. So with this put together, let's run, test the scene, and see what we have. Here we have lots of drone actors now. So we have the group, we can see that even though we only have a single follow behavior in existence, all 10 of the drones are following. And this makes sense if we look back at the code briefly inside of actor. 
This is one of the advantages here inside of the update method to passing in an actor instance to update. And that means whenever a behavior is updated, the actor that the behavior affects is arbitrary. You can pass any actor that you'd like into it. Now, in this case, behaviors are stored as part of actors. So naturally, we only affect them from the actor that they belong to. But the idea here is it doesn't matter that this behavior list, even though we have separate behavior lists, in the case of the drones, we have 10 different behavior lists that all contain the same instance. So that way, we only need one instance of seek to apply to all of the actors. Now let's run the game one last time, and I want to show a slight, um, I won't say flaw, but a slight artifact that we get from using a perfect seek across all the actors. If I begin controlling the leader actor and moving in a circle, you'll notice that since the drones are actually trying to, it's almost like they're automatically optimizing their path, they're trying to take the shortest distance possible to the leader. If you move in a circle, eventually they converge on top of each other, and it appears that we only have one drone following us. All 10 have now set themselves at almost identical positions. Now, if you really wanted to have a series of 10 actors continuously following you, you'd like there to still look like you're being followed by a swarm of actors, not one. <clears throat> now, there's a very easy way we can remedy this. We already have the ability to layer behaviors. So what if we took each of the individual drones and told them that in addition to following the leader, they were also supposed to seek, or excuse me, wander a little bit on their own. So instead of doing a perfect seek, every so often they'll also have a little bit of random applied to their motion. So just right after we apply the seek behavior, we can put a second behavior in place. We can take our drones behavior list, add a new behavior. I'm not sure what key combination that was, but apparently I'm getting really good at the random key combinations. So behavior list.add will add a new behavior wonder. And for our behavior wonder, we'll give ourselves a weight of 0 0.03 and a change interval of 15 frames. So we'll change our direction much more quickly than our leader changes direction. We'll also apply a very light weight here. F comparable to our seek, but still lighter. We have 0 0.05 for the seek weight and 0 0.03 for the wandering weight. So now if we run the game and begin moving our leader actor around in a circle, you'll see that even as time passes and the drone actors start to try and converge, you can see that the cluster of drones has grown tighter since the simulation started. They do remain separate because that wandering behavior is always going to cause them to, you could say it, it almost introduces a directional error in their wandering ability. So they're all trying to follow the leader, and over the grand scheme of things, they do all continue to follow the leader. But their wandering causes them to move a little bit off in random directions, so we're followed by a swarm of drones instead of a single converged drone. So that is working very nicely for all of our drones we're getting a nice visual flocking result out of that. So with that, that takes care of the seek behavior video.